Hello everyone. Today I'm going to share with you this story called The Truth Pixie by Matt Haig, who is one of my favourite authors. So let's begin. In a land 2,000 miles from here is a place where snow falls all the year. There you find trolls and goblins and elves and talking rabbits rather pleased with themselves. Other odd creatures live there as well, like this Truth Pixie, whose tale I shall tell. Truth Pixie's sad, as she's not like the others. She's not like her 19 sisters or 38 brothers. She's not like her brother Brian, who dances and sings. She's not like her sister Silver, with bright shiny wings. She can't tell stories. She can't sing songs. She can't do magic. She can't right wrongs. In fact, for a pixie, she is quite peculiar. And the reason for that is her great Aunt Julia. When she was young, Aunt Jay cast a spell. She said, from this day on, the truth you shall tell. To be the truth pixie, that is her curse. She must tell the truth, for better or worse. Imagine. Wherever she is, whatever the day, she only has one kind of thing to say. Just as cats go, meow, and cows go, moo, the truth pixie can only say things that are true. It's good to never tell a lie, that's what people always say. But they've probably never met the truth pixie on a cold midwinter's day. If she'd done something wrong, she'd have to confess. And if you looked scruffy, she'd say, what a mess. So the pixie stays alone in her little yellow house, with no friends except for a strange brown mouse. The mouse is called Marta, and it lives in her hair. Yes, that's right, her hair. Look, the mouse is there. The pixie looks at her empty shelves. We must go to town to feed ourselves. The truth pixie sighs as she puts on a shoe. She's ever so lonely, but what can she do? To make good friends, it shouldn't be hard. Invite them to dinner, send them a card, sing them a song or have a party. Be super kind and dress really smartly. Well, poor TP, she's tried this and more. But now, look, she's scared to leave her own door. No matter the card, no matter the song, something always, always goes wrong. Like the time she made dinner for an elf named Tinky and said that her breath was far too stinky. Or when she had a party for her sister Amelie and sang happy birthday in front of her family. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. All my family are creepy, but not as much as you. So her family got cross and they never came back. And where there were friends, there was now a big lack. So the truth pixie decided, along with her mouse, to give up on her friends and stay sad in her house. Truth shouldn't hurt people, truth shouldn't surprise, but oh Marta it does, I so wish I'd tell lies. When I go out, I hope to see absolutely no one except you and me. The truth pixie looks in the mirror and tells herself don't cry, even as she wipes a lonely tear from her eye. And so she is off, walking fast into town, trying to look unfriendly and keep her head down. But oh no, what's this over here? An elf waving and grinning ear to ear. The truth pixie tries to hide inside a big bush and says to her mouse, Please, Marta, shush. But it's too late, she knows it's true, because the elf is saying, How do you do? Of course, most people would say, I'm fine, have a nice day, and then they'd happily be on their way. But the truth pixie can't just be polite. This pixie tells the truth if it takes until night. So she breathes deep and closes her eyes. Well, I'm feeling dreadful, and that's no lie. And now that you ask, if you really must know, when I left the house, I stubbed my big toe. But that's not the trouble, not really, no. The trouble is, these truths just won't let go. 
Every elf or pixie who asks me a question gets a horrible truth I can't help but mention. So I'm stressed in bed and stressed on the loo and the mouse in my hair has just done a poo. Okay, right, says the elf backing away. Is that the time? Maybe another day. Ah, oh, Pixie, poor Pixie, waves by and feels sad. I reply to their questions, but they just think I'm mad. I don't know how to stop doing what I do without answering questions with things that are true. The truth Pixie carries on with her walking and hopes she won't have to do any more talking. I wish there was someone who could handle the truth, but there isn't, and my lonely heart is the proof. As she reaches town, the road becomes busy. The truth Pixie's fear of questions is making her dizzy. Do you like my hair? Another elf inquires. Hmm, it looks like a thousand ugly wires. What about my clothes? I got them from this great place. Well, to be fair, they're better than your face. The elf is angry and goes bright red. I hate you, Pixie. I wish you were dead. Along comes a rabbit, fluffy and brown, wondering about the truth Pixie's frown. Good day, Pixie. What are you thinking? The truth Pixie groans and she speaks without blinking. I'm thinking that rabbits are the oddest things ever, floppy-eared weirdos who aren't very clever. I'm thinking I wish they didn't go shopping when they can't even walk and insist upon hopping. And I keep on stepping in their gross round droppings. I'm sorry for the truth, but it's just not stopping. The truth Pixie bites her own hand and runs down the street until she looks up and sees two massive feet. Too late, crash and bump, she bangs into a foot and a big warty lump. The foot is so huge and knobbly and wide, the pixie feels fear all through her insides. I'm so sorry, I didn't see where I was going. But hey, look at that, I think it stopped snowing. The truth pixie stares up and up at the sky. Her heart beats fast and there's no wondering why. The person she's met is no person at all, but a troll who's way over 30 feet tall. She knows of the troll, she's seen him before. He likes to start fights and is best to ignore. He picks up the pixie to get a close look. The truth pixie read about this in a book. She's pulled high into the sky, trapped in his fist. Let me go to my house there through the mist. The troll laughs. Oh, I bet you taste yum. Your new house be soon in my big greedy tum. Wait, wait, T.P. squeaks. Don't be so hasty. I may look sweet, but I'm bony, not tasty. Hmm, grumbles the troll. Then please tell me, what can you do to stay out of my belly? The truth pixie gulps. The truth pixie is scared. The truth pixie knows that the truth can't be shared. She tries to think as the troll's face comes near, but it's hard to think with a brain full of fear. Maybe, the troll says, you is not my food. Tell me a story, but make it good. Come on, speak up. What's the matter with you? The truth pixie sighs. It has to be true. He holds the poor creature and squeezes her tight. Oh, this be perfect. This be so right. You see, I scare every creature and every bird. So the truth be something I never have heard. But, says the pixie in a rather quick blurt, you should know that the truth it can sometimes hurt. Well, listen now, pixie, and listen hard. Look at my arms. Look how I be scarred. I be tough as rock and as strong as stone. I've no fear in my blood and none in my bone. I eat monsters for breakfast and beasts for my tea. There's nothing that scares me, don't you see? The truth won't hurt. I'm too tough for that. I'm no big, soft, fluffy, scaredy cat. Cat, says the mouse in the truth pixie's hair, and she looks for a cat, but no cat is there. 
The troll keeps talking with breath that does stink. Tell me, Truth Pixie, what do you think? The Truth Pixie tries to hold her mouth closed. She covers her lips and breathes out her nose. But the truth is strong. The truth can't be planned. And so the truth comes fast and down goes her hand. What do I think? I have nothing to say. Ah, uh, oh no, the words are on their way. I think you are lumpy and warty and stupid. I think you are smelly and ugly and putrid. I think you are dumb and not in a fun way. If you were a plane, you'd get stuck on the runway. I think your teeth are yellow and brown. I think you should be careful when you come to town. Your feet are too stompy and you make people shake. You are a giant horrendous walking earthquake. You eat people who really shouldn't be eaten and once crushed a whole land in town in a land called Sweden. You're a nasty troll who smells like we and now I suppose... You're still going to eat me? The truth pixie closes her eyes and waits to be lunch. The troll opens wide and is ready to munch. I be mad and I be cross. I need to show who be the boss. I should eat you up, I really should. But you'll taste like the truth and that be no good. So the giant troll gets ready to throw, and into the air the pixie does go. She flies over fields and mountains, she flies over palaces and pretty fountains. She flies over horses eating hay, one looks up at the sky and shouts, No! She spins and twists and rolls through the air as Marta grips on to her fast-blowing hair. She thro she's thrown so far by the troll who is stinky that she arrives in a town now known as Helsinki. She drops through a window on the edge of town and sees a human in a dressing gown. The girl on the bed hugs a pillow patterned with foxes. She sits and cries in a room full of boxes. Who are you? says the girl. And what are you doing? The truth pixie sighs. Is more trouble brewing? I'm the truth pixie and I was hoping you'd ignore me because I can't sing songs and I can't tell you a story. Just as cats go meow and cows go moo, the truth pixie can only say things that are true. Far away is the home where I belong. I got thrown by a troll who found the truth too strong. I've upset two elves and a rabbit who hops. I hate this truth. It just never stops. I'm the most miserable thing that you ever did see. I upset people just by being me. The girl smiles softly. I know the feeling. She looks sadly up to the ceiling. My name is Ada. It has three A's. And we're moving house in just two days. The truth pixie feels bad. She can see the girl's truth. This is nearly her last night under this roof. There are other things too that the pixie can see. Ada's hundred worries about what will be. You are the truth, pixie. Tell me how this ends. Can I stay in this town with all my friends? Will my father keep his job? Will my gran get better? Was the doctor lying in his scary letter? The truth pixie hears this and knows she can't leave. She must answer with truth, but make her believe. Listen, Ada, I know it's a blow. The answer to your question, she says, is no. Ada goes pale. Ada can't speak. Ada feels scared and a little bit weak. The truth pixie knows she's made this day worse. She hates the truth. She hates her curse. She watches Ada get sadder and sadder, as if stuck down a hole without a ladder. Then the pixie wonders if she can find a ladder of words for Ada to climb. Listen, Ada, I have something to say. The truth can be hard. That is its way. You will have to move house as your dad has no money. You will have to lose friends and that isn't funny. There will be people you love who can't stay forever and there will be things you can't fix although you are clever. But listen hard and listen good. Life might not go as it should. But you are young and your life will be magic 
It will be happy and funny and sometimes tragic. Don't forget who you are. You are a fighter as the dark in the sky makes the stars shine brighter. You will find the bad stuff has good bits too. The bad days are the days that make you, you. You can't always see goodness, but it's always there, just like the mouse who hides in my hair. If everything was perfect every single day, you'd never know the good from the just about okay. The truth is, your future will often be great. It's bad now you're seven, but just wait till you're eight. You will make new friends as good as the old, friends who'll warm your heart against the cold. The house you move to will be smaller than here, but you'll be so happy there this time next year. The best things in life are yet to come. You'll read great books and you'll have great fun. You'll have a pet cat you'll name after your gran. Cat, worries Marta, it's time I ran. The rest of your life is full of good stuff. You'll travel the seas, both calm and rough. It's up to you wherever you go. The sun of the desert, the cold of the snow. You'll eat ice cream, tasting of strawberry and rose. You'll feel happiness from your head to your toes. You'll love your pet cat and she'll enjoy a cuddle. And you'll dance and sing and splash in a puddle. You'll have fun at Christmas and Easter too. In summer, you'll sometimes go to the zoo. You'll laugh at bad jokes and fall off a chair. Feel the sun on your face and the wind in your hair. You see, your life is like a voice. How you use it is really your choice. You can live life as a mumble or sing it clear, but it will often be special, you'll be glad to hear. You'll have so many moments, whole years full of fun, that will be there just waiting once these sad days are done. Sure, life isn't always one big smile, but things turn out fine when you wait a while. Yes, the night has dark bits, but it has stars too, and you'll feel when they shine that they shine just for you. You will step outside and see from the park that the light is brighter when it's next to the dark. You will have so many great times ahead and soft happy dreams from inside your bed. The future is changing, a life is a mix, a life's made of hope like a house is of bricks. And tonight, right now, you feel very sad, but the rest of your life, it won't be so bad. Ada listened and Ada heard, Ada hung on every word. Ada knows the pixie is right, the present is dark, but the future is bright. Thank you, Truth Pixie, you have made things clear. I will cry today, but I won't cry all year. It's all a bit weird and a little bit mad, but you'll never know happy unless you know sad. The Truth Pixie starts to feel a bit pleased. Ada gives Marta some very fine cheese. The Pixie sighs. I guess I should go, the girl thinks hard, and then says, no. The far north, says the pixie, is where I belong, but even as she says it, she feels it is wrong. Ada stands up and looks very serious. Listen, she says, it's not so mysterious. You've just said that life is what we choose. If you stay with me, you've nothing to lose. The truth pixie thinks, the truth pixie ponders. The truth pixie blinks and the truth pixie wonders. With you? Are you sure? But what about your dad? Dad talks about pixies when he thinks I am sad. He won't mind. He likes my friends. Really? says the pixie and her heart starts to mend. But what about Marta when you get your new cat? Hmm, yes, we'll need to think about that. Maybe I'll get a dog instead. The future keeps changing. That's what you said. The Truth Pixie smiles from ear to ear, her first actual smile in over a year. Thank you, Ada. Thanks for being you. Thanks for making me glad to be true. And Ada smiles back and looks out at the sky. The Pixie is proud that she never did lie. Ada's father walks in and sees the creature there with its big bright eyes and a mouse in its hair. Then he sees something stranger that he couldn't replace a smile on his daughter's once sad face. 
Oh, Pixie, he says, thank you a lot. Ada wanted a smile, and now that's what she's got. You must stay with us, if you've got no better plan. Join us for supper, there's soup in the pan. Oh, thank you, says TP, you're so very kind. Can my mouse join us too, if you really don't mind? Ada laughs, and her father laughs too. And the truth pixie laughs, and the laugh feels new. The pixie still lives there to this day. Her truth no longer needs to hide away. That's the power of a loving friend. And here's the part where we say the end. Well, I hope you really enjoyed that story as much as I enjoy that story. And I'll hopefully be seeing you soon to share some more stories.